amazing. We also have Lauren Levera. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming out. Ooh. This is interesting. Maybe we'll get back here. Um, hello. 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 Bridget. I think I can just project. It's a black chip. Listen, we're still trying to process this whole thing. This is very surreal, very amazing to us. We started as a $50,000 movie, and now we're the number one movie in America. <laughs> testament to you guys because I've been saying this for years now this franchise has never had any marketing any money for any publicity we still don't even though we had the biggest budget now we still only had a $500,000 marketing campaign to put that in perspective Joker has a $200 million marketing campaign. so you know and it's just it's all just word of mouth and you guys just you know coming to cons and just you know being interactive with us it's so personal it's so beautiful and we just want to keep making the best movies we can for you guys and just keep satisfying you guys because you guys are just the fucking best. So thank you so much and I really hope you enjoy this if you haven't seen it and thank you for seeing it for the second or third time right now. You guys are amazing. So thank you. Welcome everybody to episode 11. Yes, we've made it to the big one one, David. This is our big Halloween special, a la Terrifier style. That's Happy right. Halloween. I'm Happy here Halloween. with our good friend Art. Art the Clown is behind me. Uh, good old Artie. I'm surprised you didn't have your boot mask like the last review we had. What did I have? Oh, that's right. I had the, the, the clown mask. Bootleg Art, remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. Bootleg Art. No, I don't even have my, my Terrifier shirt. I was thinking about it, but I got back from work, and it's dirty. Don't ask me but why, it's but it, perfect. It, it smells like urine, so I didn't want it's to perfect. work. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, I bought art behind us there. I saw that. I saw it. I mean, I got art overload from last weekend. So, 
we actually got the Creatures of the Night gang together in person. It's been a while. We went to uh, go see Terrifier 3 in theaters for the first time because until this point, we've seen one and two at home. Correct. So yeah. we felt like we had to go do the theatrical experience. And what an experience it was because not only did we go see it at a big ass theater, but we saw it with the cast and crew there, which was pretty cool, man. It was a pretty uh, fun, special night we had that day. So, yeah, just like uh, Nachi was saying, uh, we came to the Terrifier. I think it's been like two years, right? A year ago that we did the last one. Yeah, I think our review is two. I think it was two years old, though. We did one and two in the same podcast. Yeah, we stumbled across one and two, but we all watched it, you know, at home by ourselves individually. So it was good experience seeing it in the theater. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was not, great. not only seeing it on the big screen and but seeing it with the crowd of people who are into it. And like you said, the director was there. Art the Clown was there. The actress that plays Sienna was there and the brother was there. Yeah. Wait, Lauren Rivera and uh, El Elliot Fullman. Perfect. I have their names here. Yeah. Fullman. And it was great because um, <clears throat> they were in town for a big convention this weekend. So yes. a lot of the crowd was there. So it almost felt like a little special screening, a midnight showing, even though it was, uh, you know. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was a late night. It was a late night showing. And everybody there was obviously a, a horror hound. Everybody was in costumes. Actually, I felt like, damn, maybe we should have dressed up. We were like, we look like the uh, like the normies there. But yeah. everybody, everybody was into it. Everybody that was there knew what they were gonna get. So there was no fainting, no vomiting, none of that bullshit that we keep hearing about. So in it was, fact, it was a blast. Uh, in fact, a lot of people there had already seen it, and they came to see it again multiple times because they yeah. knew that these people were gonna be there. So yeah, yeah, which was great. And they gave away, I think, uh, passes for the convention the next day. To the I went crowd. It was, it was good, and it was a good surprise. Me and Dina actually, we we jumped the next day for like a couple of hours when it was closing since it was so close the convention was literally like 10 minute drive from the house oh nice so like midday we were like you know what I want to just go over there before they close and check it out and we went over there a lot of the vendors were already closing up shop but i managed to pick up one thing in honor of that weekend from a cool local artist here in miami so oh nice i got that just to round out the whole uh, Terrifier weekend that we had. That's, good. Um, that's that's similar to the shirt that I wanted to buy him with the sunglasses. Yeah, it has like the Japanese uh, letters on it and shit. But uh, uh, I, I didn't get to see much because it was already like last minute, you know. Um, there was a few like lower tier celebrities there like packing up their shit. And it's cool because they, <laughs> they had a wrestling match going on. And it was like some kind of fantasy wrestling league. So everybody was a slasher character wrestling each other. Oh, interesting. So, <laughs> so we sat there and we saw Art the Clown chainsaw the Joker down his crotch. It was like, but at that point, it was shit. not. It was not. Uh, it was not the real guy right was it David? no no hell no no these are wrestlers these are wrestlers they're just like we saw Ch uh, leatherhead wrestle michael myers and but the arthur clown one he bought he like hooked the joker upside down on the turnbuckle, and he like had a fake chainsaw he like went down his crotch i was like that was a that was a perfect way to end uh <laughs> the terrifier weekend watching bootleg art wrestle <laughs> Oh, we have a cameo. It's What's Art the up? Clown, what? everyone. Art the Clown. <laughs> hi, Nachi. What's up? Nothing much. Okay. Bye. Bye. Tell Dina I said hi. Will do. Will do. I'm sure next time we'll all watch Terrifier together, Bia. No, I'm okay. <laughs> Let's watch something else. <laughs> it might be a little much for me. Bye. I think it's a little Bye. much for you. <laughs> that was the rare Bia cameo. Yeah, be up up then and give me a beer. <laughs> That's a good wife. Yep. <laughs> so, anyways, Terrifier three, David. That's right. What what do you what do you um your overall impression of one and two? What were you like? What were you hyped out 
hyped up about in part three from what you had heard so far? Okay, good question. Well, the first one obviously was a good surprise. I think I saw it first. Maybe you heard about it, but I think I told you about it. We kind of did that. And then yeah, you, that, you that, actually I, pushed me to watch part one. Because I, I, like, I, I rewatched our podcast on the first two. Yeah. And I pretty much stated the reason why I had already heard about it, but I never watched it. It's because I fucking hate clowns. I hate clowns. Like, they creep me out. And, um, but the terrifier clown imagery always popped up on different places. People always talked about it and all this stuff. So, and then you were like, dude, we got to check this out. And I was like, you know what? I think it's time. Let's go see it. Yeah, I and heard you, about it. And we, when I watched part one and I was like, holy shit. I actually really, really dug that movie and I got really into it. So I got back with you and I was like, dude, this is awesome. Then we watched part two and we were like Terrifier fanboys after that, I guess. Exactly. Um, I heard about Terrifier one. Uh, I heard about Terrifier on the Howard Stern show. Part two had just come out in theaters. It was more like a limited release, not as big mainstream so, as this one. Yeah, but, part two was like, it was like, yeah, I think it was, uh, no, no, it was only a, uh, what do you call those? Um, Limited run. The streaming event. Oh, the thumbs up emoji again on you <laughs> from the last podcast. I didn't do that. It always pops up on you. I must. That's weird. Yeah, it went away. I click something. Anyway. Yeah. Part it, two it was, what do you call those? Um, You know, like in movie theaters, they stream for a weekend, like concerts and shit like that. Oh, Fathom. Like the Fathom. It, it was a Fathom event that they only did for like a weekend on certain movie theaters or something and it blew up and it was making millions like it made i think part two grossed at the end 15.7 mil but when they hit those numbers out of nowhere the uh the theater owners were like what the fuck? we can't just stream this for one weekend we have to keep it going so a lot more theaters jumped in on it and it became the phenomenon that's actually what made terrifier a more household name mm-hmm Part two exploded like that. It made, I mean, it caught part two cost. I think 500,000. I heard. No, no, part two was 250K. Oh, so then part one was even less. Part one was, uh, part one? I don't even know. Part, yeah, part one was way less. I was like, oh, I got to look into it. I thought part one was the 250, and then part two, he got a little bit more, but under a million. And then this one is 2 million. Anyway, either way. There's a, there's a guy on Howard Stern who's a super horror fan, and he was talking about a screen that he had went to. He went yeah. to see Terrifier 2. People were throwing up. You know, he was talking about it, and he was describing scenes. So I was like, oh, I got to look this up. And I found the Terrifier 1, obviously. Part 2 was in the theater. Yeah. And, and then I, that's, that's, that's why I stumbled across it. And just like you, I was surprised because it's super low budget, but there's craft to it. And it looked like almost like something that we could do. If we had enough time, but but it just had that that grindhouse vibe. It was a vibe. total. It was a total grindhouse movie slash an effects reel because when part one came out, I started researching the shit out of it because I became obsessed. And it was like I found out that David Lone was like an effects guy, and he did his own effects. He did all the practical stuff, so he he was wearing all the hats. He was directing. He was editing. He was doing all the practical effects himself, and that's like super impressive so i was like this guy is worth my time of like and money you know so uh that's why i was like you know when part three comes out we have to go to the movies we have to like support it mm -hmm. and i think it was just like perfect that he showed up yeah it was, great. Know, it was like it was like Mwah, chef's kiss fucking awesome i remember when, when we saw part two when we did our review for part two they had already announced that three was coming out i think you're the one that told me he's got two million dollars so that to answer your question, my bit, my first thing is like, damn, he's got two million dollars now. What is he gonna do? You know what I mean? What's he gonna do exactly? Is he gonna is he gonna sell out? Is it gonna become more? Um, That's what a lot of people stream? were afraid of, because he's actually working with a studio this time. Mm -hmm. So everybody was people. like, when they start putting in that money, you know how it's gonna start to happen. But absolutely not. <laughs> no, no. In fact, no, because kids get killed though. Yes. Although, <laughs> although I, I, I mean, kids getting killed no matter what. I mean, these movies are for specific types of, of film goers. You know, it's very offensive. But in the offensive world, I find it, it was, I found it a little bit tasteful that he didn't really actually show the murders of the kids as graphically as he does the adults. Well, he I think show, he shows body parts in the explosion only. 
But the, charred pieces and stuff, right? The first kid that gets murdered, you hear it off screen. Oh yeah, you hear it big time, but you only hear it. Yeah. Your imagination fills in the blanks. They don't show the little cute girl getting killed. They assume you assume it. He opens the cupboard and you oh know, yeah, but they never they never touched up on that, right? Did you notice the teaser trailer was different? It was a different little girl. They shot that just for the teaser. Look at the teaser again. When the girl really? comes out, are you Santa Claus? It's a different girl. It's a different set. It's different. Interesting. The, yeah, he probably the, shot. That was probably the first thing he did. Yeah. Just to get a teaser. Yeah, it was probably remember, part of the remember in the teaser, he looks like that at the camera it, and turns around. It was very yeah. much like Terminator 2 trailer. Like it was done. Like I'm sure since it's a big studio with a lot more money involved, they were like, we need to get hype early. So they probably shot first. Yeah. A teaser trailer. That. Yeah. And it reminded me of the. You probably don't remember, but do you remember the, the trailer for Friday 13th? Jason goes to Manhattan. No. The teaser trailer started like a fake trailer for New York. Dun, 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 dun. They showed Times Square. And yes, couple, I remember it. I remember it. The couple it. goes up to the roof and they're about to like kiss. They're drunk and yeah. they turn around and Jason's standing on the roof, turns around and goes dun, 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 dun. Mm -hmm. Takes Manhattan. I'm pretty sure it was an homage to that because he's like around our age. I think he's in his 40s, right? Sorry. Got to take that out. He's around our age, right? Damien Lamone. He's around our age. Leon. Uh, I don't know. I think he's, I think he's, I think he's around our age. Let me see. I mean, he looks like he's our age. I don't know. 42. So 42. Well, he's, he's, in that, he's in that area. <laughs> he's younger than me. <laughs> oh, younger than me too, but I figured he was in that area. So he probably grew up with the same kind of movies we did. So anyway, I, I, had, a good, I had a good time. I, I think I, I, told, I talked to you about this at the theater. In the beginning, I was a little bit nervous. It was more like being there. And I was like, God, I hope it's good. I hope it's good. And yeah. then I was a little nervous in the beginning just to see what they were going to do. But then, but then I, was, I, was, um, I, I wasn't disappointed. I had a great time. There's a, there's a I just wish it was I, longer. Sorry. I well, wish this, it was longer. Because the, like the part second two one was, was so was long. Very long. But I, I think a lot of people complained that, that was it was... I think a lot of people complained that it was too long. Maybe, yeah. So you know like how it is. That's the one thing that I'm sure the studios were like, we have to trim it. It's going to be in more theaters. We want people to like make it through. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it makes sense because um, I don't think I saw the second one all the way through. So I took breaks. You know, I watched it digitally. So yeah, I, yeah, yeah. It maybe was too long, but I didn't realize it. You know, it's funny. I remember calling you. I actually saw part two in one sitting and I was like, yeah. dude, it's long. But for me, it went by like... It's just so much going on in part two. And not only that, in part two is the first time that they, they threw in more of that yes. fantasy mystical aspect of oh. Arthur Clown. And it made it more interesting because I was like, where the fuck are they going with this? No, the you second know? you're right. The second one started all the world building. The first one was just basically him in a house. This one it's is funny. when they, they, they bring in the I was watching. I was watching a recap on part one yesterday because I haven't seen part one in a while. And I was like, I don't know whose video I saw. And there was a scene that I totally forgot about. When the movie first starts, they have that whole art gearing up scene. Mm -hmm. And there's a close-up of his face putting on white paint for the first time. Yes. And um, David Leon said in an interview that basically part one, he is a human serial killer. He's not super powered anything. He does die in part one when he is reborn at the end of the movie, that weird scene where it's like a head that. Yeah. It's kind of like a hell spawn re bringing him back in as a demon for the first time. So from part two on is when he's sort of like a demon. Yeah. Part one, he's a human serial killer. Okay. Good to know. It makes so sense. Like, that makes more sense. You know why in part one, there really isn't any mystical mysticism except for the weird credit cookie ending. Um, and then part two, he's full on hell demon. And part three, he's blatantly full on hell demon. Yeah, we'll talk about, I guess, when we go through. Yeah, part three, they definitely, they, they basically say, yeah, they, they, they acknowledge the fact that he's a demon and they have all, all like, you learn that he, he's kind of like a, a hench, like a spawn and he's got, has to follow. Yeah. I from what I can kind of put together, there's like different types of demons and different tiers. Okay. So like the deformed uh, girl that's always with him, the reporter. Yeah. She's actually the pale girl 
The little girl from part two. Oh. Her spirit is in her now. Okay, so... And he said that the pale girl will definitely return in part uh, four. But uh, it, but the the woman with the messed up face, she's not the reporter. Remember, the, she's the one that, that attacks the reporter in the beginning. Right, right, right. Yes. Yeah. Right. So basically, she's just a vessel. That's why, you know, obviously she has the red eyes and all that shit. So the little girl is not in the third one. I realized that today when I was thinking. No, about she's it. not. Because yeah. she's inside the body of this one. Yeah. They don't have to, right. they don't explain that very well. But I, I, I saw some interviews where he okay. explains it. So I was like, oh, okay. I Makes didn't, even, I didn't catch that. Now. So mm -hmm. the, the, the third one starts, of course, with the, the Christmas Eve, the family getting ready, getting tucked in. It starts in, like a Christmas family. movie with the Christmas music in a snowy, cozy nighttime scene inside the interior of a house. The mom and dad are in bed, the little girl with the uh, with the little brother and everything, you know, yeah. they, they set up the whole Christmas vibe. It's perfect. The snow is falling. It looks like the Home Alone house, right? Yes. Right. Yes. He's got the, the color. Lighting, the lighting is beautiful. The, the, the windows are frosted. There's a snowstorm outside. You get the whole Christmas vibe in October, which I fucking love winter horror movies like christmas horror is very rare yeah i mean recently we've got a lot of them remember we had that santa claus movie with the uh, david harbour oh, oh yeah, yeah. Bad, uh, we had that david harbour santa claus movie then we had that movie with mel gibson with santa claus and we yes. got we got that that stupid movie coming out you've seen red one with the rock and Chris oh yeah, yeah. And that, that that doesn't count that's garbage that's that strange. looks like a committee movie saying you know be cool and Krampus, Krampus, the guy Krampus who did uh, Trick or Treat and all that. But so that's how the movie starts. And then you get the uh, everybody goes to bed. The little girls like I hear, you know, footsteps on the roof. And the parents are like, just go to sleep. I have to wake up in the morning, blah, blah, blah. She tries to get her little brother. I think Santa's here. He's like he brushes her off. He's asleep, too. They all act like they're fucking drunk and they're just hung over. They all <laughs> go away now. Yeah. And she goes downstairs and boom. Yeah, the usual you Santa Claus kind of deal. And of course, Art the Clown kills them all. That's like the, the James Bond opening scene. There's the reveal. There's Santa Claus. Obviously, it's not Santa Claus. The camera pans to the front and you see that it's Art the Clown. Now, is that supposed to take place later on? It's out of order, right? Does it go flashback? Because he has a Santa Claus outfit, but then yet when the movie starts, he does it and gets it from the bar. So that must be in between. That must be in a different, because they do cut to like five years earlier or something, right? It is, it is, it is past. Yeah. It jumps around in the beginning. Yeah. That is enough, like you said, I think that was just since they filmed the teaser, they're like, fuck it, let's just redo it with the actual little girl and the actors that we got. Let's just start the movie with the teaser. And then after that, the movie start will start story. officially. Yeah. Which is great because I'm sure they did it on purpose to set the tone for it being a holiday Christmas movie. He did. Forward. He's like, this is what's going to be. Uh, leave now if you don't want to see the rest of the movie. You know what I mean? It's like, this is what's going to be. Let's. You can leave now if you want to because the story is going to start almost like that. Correct. And, and then. And then it he, cuts to, to the new He basically story. butchers. He goes upstairs. He kills the parents. He goes to the other room. He kills the little brother off screen. It's very tasteful. This is an art film. Yes. Very <laughs> tasteful. Then he goes downstairs and they have this hilarious scene where it's a slow camera pullback and Art the Clown is all bloodied up, sitting on a table, eating his Santa Claus cookies with milk. Yes. And he's just sort of like wallowing in his 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 uh, amazing night and then you know he's about to leave and then he stops because he hears something he turns around he opens a cupboard and there's hiding the little sister and then it just i think it cuts to terrifier title yeah terrifier it, fades out, it fades out or something terrifier three yes and then the movie starts it just sets the fucking tone of the Christmas scenario, the vibe, everything is set within the first three, four, five minutes of the movie. 
then we start getting into the uh, the story of all of our main protagonists in the film. Uh, you find out that uh, that Sienna has been sort of in a mental health facility. Yeah, she's like Sarah Connor on and off for the past five years. Her brother and her have not been speaking because they're honestly they're fucked in the head from their experience of Terrifier too. Oh, yeah. You know? Traumatized. Yeah, the little brother is now in college. He's a college man now. She's on in and out of a of a mental facility. And uh she's gonna come out and be picked up by her uncle in law, I think it was. It's her her her, her aunt's her, her aunt's husband. Husband. Yeah. Right. So she comes to stay with them for a while. And that's pretty much how the movie is laid out now. We're sort of caught up with the five year gap of Terrifier two and three. Yeah. She's getting she's she's very scarred physically and mentally. And she's just trying to move on with her life. Same thing with her little brother. He's in college trying to be normal. And they show a lot of scenes where like his roommate's girlfriend has a like serial killer podcast and she finds out that she finds out that uh the uh, the uh, elliot fullman character is actually her boyfriend's roommate he doesn't have a clue that he is like the survivor of a serial killer clown so she finds out who he is and she's like oh my god you have to get me a you have to get me this guy to be on my podcast or whatever yeah, so they, she's happy and he doesn't want any part of that. He doesn't even want to think about that shit. So he blows her off and tells her he'll think about it. But it kind of sets up a few more characters to be cannon yeah. fodder later in the movie. They, they do a thing where they set up that the incidents of part one and two are kind of like famous now. People yeah, they're know super famous. People know about it. You know, it was right. the news. They even gave him a name like the, they call him something murderer. The something something murderer. The clown <laughs> murderer. Some, uh, they something. something. Probably the, the name, name of the, of the town. town. Yeah. Yeah, I don't so remember. They, the... they they set that up kind of like they do it, you know, like in modern horror movies, like a like Scream or they do in Freddy, where people are aware of what happened, but they don't necessarily believe that Art the Clown is uh, following her. She, they think, remember, <clears throat> they, everyone pretty much thinks that it's, it's she she's not letting go and she's seeing visions and they're not real. But of course, we know that Art the Clown is after her. Well, yeah, because to them, no matter what, it's a it's human a serial killer. Yeah. They don't. They don't want to, they don't believe that there's any kind of like, you know, supernatural elements to any of this. It's just a guy, a serial killer who is dead now, yeah. you know, and now she's just having PTSD for surviving that shit. So they, you know, she takes pills and every time she has an episode, like at the dinner table, yeah, they kind of freak insane. out and they start arguing within themselves. Like, you see, I told you, this is not a good idea to have her come to the house. They, yeah. have, a, they have a young daughter who super look ups, looks up to her because she, she's her, what, her cousin or whatever? I don't know how that works. Yeah, it would be her cousin. Yeah, the aunt, yeah, it would be her little cousin. She, she super looks up to her, looks and, they her and they're like, part dude, of the movie. their bond is a big part of the movie that kind of yes. sets the motivation Absolutely. Guess, for, for everything later on. And like you said, they do the same, they do the thing they do in movies when, and like you said, they do the same, they do the thing they do in movies when when a character is living with other people, you have the, the husband who's like, I don't, I don't agree with it. Then you have the the wife is like, no, we should listen to her. Yeah, because no matter what, at the end of the day, down, she goes down. Mom's, and like, they turn on it's her mom's sister, so she's yeah. like, please, you know, let's give it a chance. We have to try to help this girl out, but it can only go so far. When her episodes start to get violent in front of the daughter, who's very young, that's when things start to like get like a little sketchy with them, and you know, the family aspect of it starts to fracture, and it makes it that more. It gives it more of a dramatic vibe to a horror film. And to her credit, Lauren Lavera does a phenomenal job. Besides David, Hor- uh, David Howard Thornton, she is the best actress in this fucking movie. Yeah, she's really good. And it's the same case in part two. Like, she's very good. She's very talented actress. She's going to blow the fuck up after this. Yeah. I think she just got casted in something. I, read I, yeah, well, I was thinking the same. This, when I saw the second one and in this one too... She's really good. She's almost like too good for it. You know what I mean? Her emotional range is damn good. Like, and she is totally believable. And she's a, 
she's a kickboxer. Like I don't, I'm not saying like an MMA fighter, but she is like I didn't know that a very athletic fighting background. So it adds to the believability of her fight scenes when she's fighting things off. Yeah, she says yes. I I saw a video where yeah she has a stunt woman. But only because legally, by the studio standards, they don't allow her to do X, Y, and Z. But a lot of the times when she's getting tossed over couches and shit, it's her. It's, so it gives her a little extra believability on top of that. She's, she's a very physical actress. But besides uh, uh, Art the Clown, she has always been, since part two, like the best thing that's happened to this movie. Like, to me... I put her right there on the top tier of final girls. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the 80s and stuff, even the 90s, usually final girls are girly girls, you know? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Laurie Strode is the only one that had a little bit of tomboyishness to her for the most part. But, like but in, in the first year, And even in, the, in, the, even, even in, in uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, it's always like a teeny bopper girl who just survives. And, yeah. and, and she's scared 80% of the time with her character. I feel like she is scared, but she's also a badass and she will fucking take it to the clown even before she got the sword and started learning more about possibilities of what she's meant to be. She was always a very strong character, a believable strong character, not like strong woman script down your throat, it's woman hey, Star stronger Wars, than Star man. Wars. No, I know yeah, what you mean. Exactly. And I mentioned it before, but uh, not not to the extent that the, that that Terminator Two did. But it's a little bit like Sarah mm. Connor. Where... Absolutely, Sarah Connor, Part One, very young, very naive, yeah. very scared, very believable. Part Two, older, more hardened, traumatized, and hardened, and more, then... more trained and more militaristic, and totally fucking believable as a badass. Totally fucking believable. Same thing with her. Part one, she's a girl in high school going to parties and shit, and she's just doing cosplay costumes and shit. Scared. She but realizes she's that she's been chosen to do right. something special, like Sarah right. Connor, and then boom. So in this movie, you start to get flashbacks of her as a child mm -hmm. with her dad again. Who we found out later on was... Jason Patrick. Jason Patrick. I did yes. not recognize him at all. I got. Go I didn't recognize him either. Afterwards, I saw him on the credits, and I went home and I looked it up, and I was like, "Holy shit! It was the dad." How did I fucking catch that? He aged quick. I mean, we're all getting old, but the last time I saw him in a movie was Narc. Remember Narc, that indie movie where he had the beard? That it was a crooked cop. Oh, that was that was a back. That was a while back. That's like twenty years ago. I, I think. I think Jason Patrick though, he's probably been doing a lot of TV work. I don't oh, think okay. he's been hiatus. No, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, after Speed 2, it all went to TV. <laughs> <laughs> Speed 2, yeah. But, um, but let me tell you, the flashback scene with, with Jason Patrick was very, very fucking good. Because it sort of kind of filled you in on the fact that her father knew a lot more about the yeah. supernatural shit that was happening and he knew about what possibly could be in store for his daughter and i think it was a very well-made scene i think that him being an artist and being able to illustrate things for her makes it so interesting like i hope in part four they do more flashbacks with father and daughter and and give his own character a more rounded character because i feel like it's kind of awesome that her dad was prepping her basically to be buffy the vampire slayer <laughs> further down the line and i'm more interested i want to know more about her father now why does he know this yeah he obviously had some form of abilities where he could see things and he knew things you know and they only slightly touch up on it and I'm all about it. I want to know more about the Jason Patrick character. I want to know more about that backstory and her upbringing. So I hope they do that in part four. Just like you said, yeah, the second one, they do set up the fact that her father knew. But in this movie, like you said, you have a scene where the father's actually telling her, acknowledging it. And then they have that scene where 
it was it was it was it was pretty intense when she grabs the paper oh yeah and he had and then it becomes like the the shine they do something like there's like the quickening uh, it was like the highlander shit was happening and they were like yeah he's obviously seeing all kinds of shit like there's something going on when but they don't tell you what they don't show you that they just kind of do that slow like move in or he's obviously he doesn't let go of the painting and he's seeing it almost looks like he's having a stroke or something it's like I, you don't I'm know thinking, what's happening i'm thinking maybe he passed he passed something to her there maybe he passing something to her or he realized that she has the gift like him i think what was happening there i think what they were insinuating was he makes her a painting of what she envisioned right she wanted a superhero based yeah. on her specifics and he surprises her with the painting which later on in part well yeah what ended up being that, in part uh, two was the infamous angel warrior costume and when he's giving it to her and she grabs it it was almost as if he was finding out her future like maybe. he was seeing what was going to happen to her and he then could have, he could be seeing what's going to be part four in the hell in the god hell only hell. knows yes god only knows absolutely because she's yeah, he definitely will that come back. whole scene was about her being portrayed as an angelic warrior we'll get to the ending of part but it's totally related so i agree with you i think that probably what they insinuate is that he sees the final bottle the final boss you maybe, know what i mean maybe. what the, the finale is going to be like we'll find out Did you see he hasn't movie? even he has no idea what the fuck part four is going to be he doesn't have the script yet but i'm sure he has a i know for a fact that he has said that ever since part two he already knows the whole arch of every character and he knows how it ends and so and he has only told supposedly uh david howard thornton so they both know how it ends he there's a there's a supposedly a deleted scene of that of that scene with the dad where he finds out her metachlorine count after he <laughs> grabs the paper it's so stupid <laughs> he pulls out the thing and he goes he calls he for some reason he calls you mcgregor it's to the roof not even master yoda has that metachlorine count. <laughs> but he's doing the george lucas right he knows the ending we just have to get there yeah just don't go with the george lucas uh, green screen obsession i hope not keep it up nah nah he won't he's he's obsessed with practical effects part four is going to be shot in the volume can you imagine in the volume, in the volume james cameron's going to come no. in we're, no. gonna, we're gonna you know cg art yeah, yeah yeah no no we're gonna bring in giant screens for backgrounds it won't happen um so i mean part three definitely has um like a visual marker meaning like you know when a franchise gets really big and you're like which one was that one that's the one where he does this so this one's going to be oh that's the santa claus one you know what i mean well, no it's just costume I, changes yeah but i think how one. it works for terrifier is the kill of each movie yeah every movie has the kill that's how for you is what the, that's the saw one right the oh, that's, of course. that's the famous one <laughs> even though even though the one that caught me the most off guard it made me laugh so hard which is so fucked up i don't know what that says about me but every motherfucker in that theater was laughing including my wife dina what, part three and we were looking at each other was the santa scene in the mall with all the kids yeah yeah, yeah that, that was not holy shit! it came out of nowhere and i was like why am i laughing this shit is so fucking wrong but hilarious at the same fucking time Yes, you're right. That whole scene is good and you're on edge because you're like, what it was shocking. Happen? It yeah. was shocking. And it was so well done because I, I didn't see it coming. Did you? No, no. I mean, I knew something no. was going to happen, but yeah, not yeah. that. I knew something was going to happen. I didn't know it was going to be a bomb. I mean, maybe a split <laughs> second before it happened when the kids opening the gift, I'm like, okay, I feel like boom. And it was just like, we got it right away. Let, let me tell you something. My all time slasher is and always will be michael myers mm -hmm. that's the og to me that's the one that since i was a youngling i always like, gravitated to the halloween films i always liked freddy and i thought freddy was funny and all that shit. but it just didn't hit it didn't never hit for me the same way that did for michael myers i was never a leatherhead a leatherhead guy i enjoyed texas chainsaw one and i saw a few yeah. of the other ones 
It's just not my shtick. Art the Clown surpassed them. And for me to say that he even surpassed Freddy is a lot of, it's almost blasphemy for me. A lot, a lot of people are going to be like, what the fuck? No, I understand what you're saying. He's the closest to Freddy out of all of them. If you think he about is it. the closest to Freddy. But what I love about Art the Clown is his um, you don't know what he's going to do next. Mm -hmm. He is the most unpredictable slasher character from all of them. Okay, so you know that Michael Myers, no matter what, he's going to destroy you with his hands. He's going to stab you, chop you up, strangle yeah. you. Or crush That's you as far it goes. Yeah. Freddy, with his fucking glove, or with his mental nightmare techniques of oh, yeah. destroying your body one way or another in the dream world. Uh, Ghostface is always just going to be a fucking... And it's I always different people. He's a little bitch. All he does is run around. He stabs you. Half the time, he's tripping on himself. Well, Whatever. Yeah, Ghostface doesn't really count because Ghostface is a different person in each movie. Doesn't matter. He does count but, to me because he, they always take the entity of being Ghostface. Yeah. So he is an iconic slasher, whether you like it or not. I well, don't. I, love, I, you know, honestly, you know I, love I only like the first couple, and I'm not that big a fan of any of the ones that came after. The first one to me is yeah, royalty, royalty level. Um, Art the clown. There is unhinged. Art the Clown has no limits. Art the Clown has killed people straight up with a fucking pistol, gangster style, shoot you. Now, he uses fucking bombs to bomb you. He would chop your ass up like a regular, iconic slasher killer. He will do whatever. There is no limits for Art the Clown. And now on top of it, he's supernatural. And he's sadistic, of course. And That's he the is thing. the most he'll sadistic. He'll drag it out. And it's almost like he's breaking the fourth wall many times because he'll look and make jokes like, Ooh, look what I did. Look what I yes. did. This is cool. Art the Clown is a combination of Freddy Krueger. And, and Saw, a little bit of the Saw angle with torturing people. With tor yes, with body torture. He is funny as much as he is petrifying at the same time. Sometimes I laugh so hard and I'm like, I love this guy. And then other times I'm like, damn, this guy's a dick. <laughs> Part three truly is the most mean spirited Art the Clown. Part one, very mean spirited. Part two, straight up Nightmare on Elm Street, two, three, funny as fuck. Part three, back to part one, Art the Clown sadistic torture porn scary with sprinkled throughout funny moments but not as funny as part two i feel like part two was probably yeah, part there two had more humor funny peak part three had some good humor the, the biggest humor uh, the ones that stand out are that scene where arts in the in the sore in the dorm and he opens <laughs> the podcast girl talking about him does he yes. smell i want to know what he's like he's checking his body and then she's, and saying, she's like I, 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 oh she's talking about fucking him yeah, and he's he, like, oh, yeah. And <laughs> he's like, all into it. He goes, he's the best serial killer ever. And he goes like, oh, shucks, you shouldn't have. <laughs> I mean, uh, David Howard Thornton's, I talked about this in the last podcast, so we covered part one and two. When he first started doing Arthur Clown, he says that his inspirations were Mr. Bean and right, you told me that. Charlie Chaplin. And Charlie Chaplin, okay? Totally can see Mr. Bean and the Charlie Chaplin. Mr. Bean. Now it's evolved where he truly is Freddy Krueger, who also, in his own way, was like a physical Charlie Chaplin from hell. Okay. I think that Robert England set the fucking bar. Robert England is a goddamn legend. He is the most iconic because it really is his own face. Yeah, Defo it's him. It's a personality, and it's him. But yeah. it's him. It's Robert England. Not a, ma a guy behind a mask. Right. It's Robert England in fire deformed makeup. Yeah. Art the clown. It's his face in that in that. It's his face. In a, with you know they have a molded. Some, yeah. Oh, yeah. He he has a prosthetic nose, 
you know, and he's wearing all white. And they cheek they like, the cheekbones, the bony cheekbones. I feel like David Howard Thornton has gotten so comfortable in his art the clown skin that you can see the evolution from part one to part three. And now it's it's his. He is his own thing. Art the Clown has become an icon because of him and his persona shining through his character being pushed by Damon Leon, who gives him probably the freedom to ad lib as much as he does. Um, he said as much. There's a lot of times where they do takes where he does unexpected shit. And I would love like, to see gag, a gag reel or blooper reel of different, oh, yeah, different bro. things. The, the new, oh, yeah. The Blu-ray for the third one. Just to be behind the camera, watching it happen, take after take after take. I will not get tired of it. I, I could be there for every fucking hour of every day watching this guy work. It must be a blast. I know it's exhausting for them and all that shit, but they all look like they probably have the time of their lives. And they're like family now. They, You know? Three movies yeah. in. Uh, uh, I know that uh, Lauren Davera has only been for two, but two doing this shit is probably like five of a oh, regular. Yeah. Oh, they're definitely friends because that <laughs> the first movie came out 2016, and Art the Clown was in his old movie called All Hallows Eve, which was 2012 or something. Yeah, right? yeah, and the so they've known each other for at least ten years, at least that we know. Well, no, 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 no. Remember, in those movies, it, it was never David Howard Thorne. It was a different Art the Clown. Oh, it was in ha All Hallows Eve. Yeah, it's a different as a different actor. David Thorne, I think, only oh, came in the David Howard Thorne only came in, I believe, in Terrifier One. Yeah, the first Terrifier. Yeah. The first one. The oh. guy that originally did it was a good friend of the director's, and I think he hated it. Like he hated being in the makeup. It wasn't his thing. But they look similar. They definitely had the similar style, even though nah, if you look if you go back and you watch those, they look quite different. I never quite seen all Hollows Eve. I just seen the poster. Yeah, if you look at the images of those movies, I mean, I've seen them both. I've seen the films, the shorts and all that, but you go back and you're like, yeah, it's, it's oh, different God. looking. Yeah, it's weird looking. It's like, yo, I've only shit. seen like the cover. Maybe they redid it or something, but I didn't notice it. I got to see it again. But the reporter's in the in All Hallows Eve, right? The same you actress. Told, you told me about that. I'm not sure. I haven't I saw seen a clip. I saw a clip of it that she puts a videotape for, she's babysitting these kids and she puts a videotape. Yeah, it was it was the same. Act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I mean I remember the scene, but I don't remember what she looked like. But I'm part. sure I'm sure he has like a little hodgepodge of cast of characters yeah. that he br has brought up with him throughout the years. So I'm sure I'm probably is, oh, which is actually kind of cool. Uh, really quick, I want to bring up um the scene in the bar, which reminded me of like a Tarantino and Glorious Bastards kind of uh -huh. like scene. It and, was, and and you talking about it now. The movie, it, it's a weird thing to say, but it does have a weird Tarantino feel to it in, in, in ways. It's almost like the way the characters speak and the situations are so absurd, but then it's yeah. treated seriously. And and like the second one, too, it just is this long, epic thing. And it felt like like if Tarantino made a horror movie, this is kind of what he would want to do. You know, I believe if I'm not mistaken. Uh, in one of the many interviews that they've done. I think uh, Damien said that a lot of that scene was basically um, improv. Uh, it, it was uh, Daniel uh, Roebuck and Clint Howard and stuff just ad living and just like evolving <laughs> the scene over and over and over. And he kind of let them just kind of like go at it with uh, David Howard Thornton <laughs> fucking around and, you know. That would have been a day that I would have done anything to have been on that shoot that day. Yes, Just seeing those crazy. fucking people going at it. I mean, <laughs> that's where he pulls clean. out the gun. That's where he pulls out the gun. In the yeah. 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 I mean, you, you got Clint Howard there and like liquid and, nitrogen. We got liquid nitrogen. Daniel Robot. These are like iconic cult favorites. You know what I mean? And then you have a new iconic cult favorite and it's just like them just like I'm sure he said, you know, this is the premise of the scene. This is kind of where it's going to go. The dialogue, I need you guys just to, like, come up with your own flow. And that was one of the best scenes in the movie. You think that... Damien, Damien had, like, in a dream world, the director would have wanted, like, 
Robert England in that role, like two horror icons in there, like like Patrick. That would, that would have been passing, amazing. Passing of the torch. That that would have Robert been... England. He looks yeah. he's got the white beard. Can you imagine? You're gonna take this, you know. That would have been great. He takes it from that Freddy. Would... That would have been a good idea. Maybe that was his they, first choice. They should have made England. him the bartender. Or the bartender. But I think the bartender character is actually one of his best friends in real life or something. And he's like maybe one of the guys that has worked in every movie for him. And he put him in it. He's like the Ted Raimi. He is like the Ted Raimi, which, by the way, was at the convention. Oh, nice. <laughs> but, you can count uh, on my steel. You can count on my steel. But uh, that was such a fucking cool scene watching the tension build up. And you're like, I know at the end, uh, Santa's going to fucking get it. And he yeah, does. you know everyone's going to get it. Yeah. The luckiest so, people were those two, oh, the two drunk girls that are leaving at the same he time. He bumps into them. He pushes, pushes them all the way. Like, asshole. <laughs> oh, so good. But and anyway. I like how the bar was very, maybe that's a Northeast thing. It was very Cheers-ish where you have to walk down the steps. Downstairs. You know, like the, the, the bars in North. And you go yes, down. it's like yeah, a basement, down, bar. basement bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love how... Yeah, it's just Santa Claus getting trashed with another dude and talking shit about work. Now, that scene almost looks plopped in. I know it explains how we got the, the, the Santa Claus the Santa outfit, costume. But it almost feels like the next scene at the mall was originally where he got the outfit from that Santa Claus and they decided, you know what, we need something else. Because the Santa goes, I'm going to go on break. And then maybe Art killed him, takes it, and then they thought, ah, it's too stupid. They needed to have that whole scene with Santa Claus. It's almost, It's almost like multiple skits shoved in the movie it felt like hey listen we can get a couple of like iconic or cult it. actors to be in a scene let's just shoot it and i'll write it into the plot of the movie and even if we have to like re rewrite that he doesn't kill the original santa claus in the mall oh yeah we'll you just, could we'll just do it this way because we need to put, you know, Clint Howard and shit in the movie. And I think it's better that way. For sure. I mean, talking about people who made movies and everything. Yeah, it's totally easy to just do an insert shot of somebody at the bar and just change the dialogue. Because it's all close-ups, really. Not only that. In a nondescript bar. It, it gives it a more iconic scene with comedy and more dialogue. It gives it, a, it, it doesn't make it... Like a traditional just slasher movie of just like kind of like part one it was just basically a bunch of kill scenes i totally agree with you and i'm going to tell you something that that's why i like these movies i like horror movies so do you but i'm not a horror fanatic where i see all of them because a lot of them they do all the same thing when uh, slasher movies it's like 20 minutes of someone checking the door and sounds and then then he just kills oh my him. god bro you just reminded me of a movie i want to I fast saw. forward it all the time just get to the kill already this is different when art walks in you don't want him to kill him right away you want to see what happens and how it gets there and it's more like it turns you kind of into a sadistic creepo where you're like you want him to take his time because yeah. that's when you get when the baby oil ready and you're like yeah baby oil time. <laughs> okay puffy <laughs> all right puffy. but that's when art gets to work you're going to get horrific scenery that makes everybody cringe and uneasy peppered in with slapstick comedy and the, and the people's reactions to him i always love his crazy faces their reactions to it are always believable like what the fuck there's a there's a scene in this movie where <laughs> daniel roebuck is like pleading for his life tied to the chair as santa claus i have a family and kids and they cut to art listening to him and he's just like you know, he's just like miming funny, like, oh, yeah, 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 uh-huh, tears, tears. And that is like the Freddy aspect of it. He doesn't say, you know, <laughs> it's prime time, bitch. Yeah. He doesn't talk. So That's his thing, yeah, yeah. is straight physical. It's all in his face. You, ju you just disappeared and came back. And yeah, now you're off focus. Oh, hold on. Hold on, I think my camera, my, my phone died, so I got to switch to shit oh, camera shit cam. mode. Hold on. Shit cam, shit cam coming in. There we go. Yeah, my phone died. I didn't charge it, so I have to go to shit cam. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry, three people. Shit cam. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now you're back to a shitty green screen. Yeah, now I look like I'm in the middle of fog. So, um, 
through this lens. But that's what that's what to me starts to catapult him up the hierarchy of slasher icons because he's scary and he makes me legitimately laugh. He has from part one and he only does it more and more in a better way throughout the movies. But he still maintains that Jesus Christ, this guy's scary. He can be both. Yeah. You know? It's hard to be both. That's my take. It's hard to be both. And that all falls on his on the actor. And I think he's, you know, I'm not saying that he's going to be big time, but I feel like in his niche, his physical acting, definitely, there's definitely a lot of work for him. You know, he just got casted, believe it or not. You know what his big reveal just was? You know that Disney just lost certain movies. Uh, they lost the copyrights and their, uh, what do you call it? Public domain. Call it? They're public domain. Public domain. They, lo- they lost the rights to Steamboat Willie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mickey Mouse. That version of Mickey Mouse is now public domain. The yeah, they're doing, they're doing a Steamboat Willie horror movie, and he just got cast as Mickey Mouse. I'm like, what the fuck? That's just crazy. Is it or it's live action? Live, I, I guess. I don't know, but he just got cast, so I'm sure it's going to be a demonization of Disney, and may, they're probably going to make it a horror movie or something. Does he? But does he have a good voice? Like, is he going to be speaking as Mickey Mouse, or he's going to be making it sounds? I mean, you heard him talk in person. He speaks like a regular person. He's very spot, soft spoken. No, I guess what I meant was, has he done any other work doing voiceover? That that he has a he has a voice talent also. But Not you know what? He idea. might he might just do like the sounds of Mickey Mouse and like. It's, I'm assuming he's going to be another quiet, physical acting performance. As like a Mickey Mouse type of character, I could be wrong. I don't but know. Animated, but it's animated. You said right? No, no. I think it's live action. Oh, that makes sense. Forget. It. I thought they were gonna go animated also. No, 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 no. no. I think they're going oh, to okay. do a Steamboat Willie horror movie. No, no, gotcha. I thought maybe it was animated also. Oh no, like, like an anime much. or something. That's gonna be some low budget slasher shit. I don't think that's gonna be. Uh, oh, okay, that makes sense. Budget. Yeah, yeah. So they're using him for yeah his physical, his physical. That's why I say he has found himself a niche, and maybe eventually he will find way to like be more himself in other roles. But he's definitely gonna be getting a lot more work going forward. Oh, I believe that. And he's got three names, which is always great. When you, have, you have three names. You either Howard a, Thornton. You're either, <laughs> yeah. a ser, you're either a serial killer or a movie star with three names like that. <laughs> okay, but we we didn't we, we haven't brought up at all the shower scene, which is one of the high yeah, highlights. There, yeah, yeah. So they basically he he terrorizes Daniel Roebuck in a bar scene, dressed like Santa. Sadistically kills him, rips his actual physical beard off his face. With and the skin. His, hot, his Santa costume. Almost like uh, when they skin your head, like, um, you right. know, like a scalp, like a scalping. Of his right. He puts it on with the flesh. And wears it out of the bar. Later on, we have oh. an infamous, what will be an infamous uh, mall scene, very reminiscent to a Christmas story. <laughs> yeah, fucked up Christmas it, story. Purposely done, I'm sure. And when he walks by in slow motion, it's like Terminator 2, like Terminator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When Sarah sees the Terminator at the bar. Dun, dun. Oh, no, the hospital scene when he comes out of the hospital. And she's yeah. like, Ooh, and she runs and it just like that. There's an epic line of parents and kids waiting to see Santa with Santa with his little helpers are like shuffling the horde of children to do the picture op and all that. Santa has to take a piss. Yeah. So he tells them, hey, cut the line. Let's give it a break. And the elves are like, does that mean we get a break too? And they fucking shut it down while everybody waits in line. While Santa's away, here comes Arthur Clown. Sees the empty Santa throne. Decides that... With a big bag of gifts. A big bag of gifts, which they don't explain where he got it. <clears throat> but it's uh, Arthur Clown, so you don't question it anymore. He sits down. One of the kids is like, oh, Santa's back. Which makes me laugh because he's in horrific clown makeup just wearing a shitty hanging bloody beard and <laughs> and a you shitty know what? You, know what? Costume. you know what at that po- I, I i don't is he wearing the beard in that scene or did he not have it i don't think he, has I think it. he does but i think it's just like hanging oh. down 
But you I know? did you notice the commentary in that scene? All the parents are on their phone, distracted. They're not paying attention. Yes. And, and then you know, I, I buy a little kid. If you see a cool guy there going, "Come here, come here," I'll be like, "Okay, maybe." Yeah, and it's done for because honestly, most parents are going to be doing the same exact thing. They don't want to be there. They're dragging their kid to get the stupid picture that they can put it on Instagram. They're on their phones. They're not looking at anything. They're just waiting in line. The first kid jumps on there. Nobody notices. And he's uh, telling him what he wants. It's a little girl. He gives the girl a gift. Oh, her, all, right, the right. A little see, girl. all the kids see that she got a gift. And that's when they run. And they charge him. <laughs> they all jump on him. And they're just tearing up his, his duffel bag and taking all the presents. You know, and then you get a funny montage of all of them ripping up the presents, but they're not showing you what the hell's in them. So you're already like, oh, my God, is there body parts in yeah. there? Or what's going on? But there were a few toys because it gives the girl like that. Oh, yeah, the first couple are straight up toys. And you're like, uh, this motherfucker, did he gift wrap this shit or did he steal it from somewhere? I'm pretty sure he did it on purpose. The, the framing of that shot, you don't see what he's pulling out. And you're like, oh, my it's God, very he's tight. Pull out you're gonna he's gonna pull out a separate head and you see like hair and you're like oh no but it was just a doll a doll right and it looks all right, you, right. Yeah. and then the most surprising scene out of the whole fucking movie because yes it was the most surprising to me no yeah it was the little fucking annoying kid that started the stampede rips open his present wide shot fucking exploded the whole fucking goddamn mall he just blew everybody to a fucking cinder the whole, yeah the whole stage is on fire the christmas trees are on fire it's like that scene in the second one during that little kid show and don't they and don't they have like <laughs> christmas music playing oh yeah it's dun, 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 <laughs> and then there's close-ups of body parts on fire and intestines oh my god there's like hands legs all charred and burning and everybody in the movie theater is you could hear the gasp and the roar of like laughter. I was, like I said, I don't know what that says about me. I was like, what the fuck? And I just started laughing. I looked at Dina and she, her face was just like. No, I know, I know. I heard you, <laughs> your, the loudest point of your laugh is where they, after it explodes, then they, in a couple seconds later, they start cutting into the close ups of the body parts. You went, you went, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I look at you. And I don't know each other like this. You have, you have two kids. So I look at you, and you're laughing, but you're oh, like, yeah. mumbling, you're literally mumbling to yourself, and you're like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> oh yeah, so, the, so much of that movie. Have you seen videos online of um, reactions to the terrible? the reaction videos? The so black and like, white people are going like this, and that's how we were too. <laughs> Except our fucking movie theater is filled with like goth kids. Yeah, yeah, thank God. Everyone it up. Knows. They're laughing so hard. And I'm like, holy shit. That's why I'm telling you. There was, sorry for interrupting. There was a guy uh, sitting next to me by himself, I think. Uh -huh. I, I looked at him during the movie. He was like this big, big guy with a huge belly, like a middle aged dude. I looked at him one part and he's just sitting there and he's just smiling. <laughs> Every time I looked at him, oh. he's like this. <laughs> like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna even talk to you. You gotta now. be careful with that guy, bro. You don't want to go to the bathroom during this movie. He probably left in the Jeepers Creepers van. <laughs> he probably still, he's probably still in that chair. Just sitting there. <laughs> Sir, you gotta get up. Oh, I've this, seen it 19 times in a row. What I want, this is what I want from a Terrifier movie. I want a Terrifier scene in a movie theater. Think of ideas for. Of, of him watching a movie with people and going crazy that would be crazy like you know excuse me so you got to get out of the theater and it's him that's very that's very like touch and go because of all the fucking theater Shoot. shootouts that have happened yeah that was there a long was time point. ago there was one point not a shooting don't make it a shooting make it more like <laughs> uh, in the bathroom of the movie theater or something there was at one point that you know for a fact there was a guy dressed like Arthur Clown that ran through the theater and my wife was just like freaked out because she was like, this is a type of movie that something yeah. could happen. And I was like, I don't know if I'm so like, I, I don't know if I'm so like jaded, numb to it that I don't even think about it anymore. I'm just like, I'm just trying to have a good time. You know what I mean? But I get it because it would be in yeah. something like this. You it know what be, I, mean? I mean, it could happen anywhere.
It could happen anywhere. So I remember one of the uh, when we worked in the movie theaters back in the day. We always yes. talk about. Our, our I know you talk, I know day. what you're gonna talk about. Go. Wasn't it? Wasn't it one of the Scream movies? No, dude. It was the faculty. It was Sherrod. It was Sherrod. He the wore faculty. a ski mask. It, it was the faculty. Not even. It was the faculty. People, if anybody's listening, that also dates us. Yeah. We were we were running the theater when the faculty came out. And one of the ushers dressed like the scream guy, and he ran through the theater, up and down the stairs, scared the shit out of people. He got fired for that. No, there was an undercover police officer that was attending the. Oh movie yeah, movie that's right. With his teenager, and I, I, you were probably there. We were standing outside. He was screaming at our manager, saying, "You know, I almost fucking shot this guy. I'm a police officer. This guy came up in a mask toward toward me, and I, I grabbed for my gun." He's the one that made a big scene. He he said, "What the fuck is going on?" And he he came. Yeah, he got fired for that. He got he got fired for that. Yeah, he was a he he was there's something wrong with that guy. He was always doing stupid things. And we're, and we're talking about yeah, there's something wrong with that cop because we're talking about the nineties, ninety eight, ninety eight. We're talking about you know pre any of this type of shit being even, more normalized. Columbine that was even before Columbine. Yeah, so I was like, this guy just overdid it and fucking. But I always remember that shit, and I remember he had a purple screen mask. It wasn't the regular white yeah, one. Yeah, it was not a. Re- it was like some bootleg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was similar, but and and but he, he was all in black, and he was working. He was in his uniform underneath. He came yeah. early to do it. Actually, he was an usher, but at that point, he was a projectionist. Remember, we trained him. He was training to be a projectionist. Trained, that's how he had access to the balcony. He went through the balcony of the. Yeah, he house. ran down the stairs. He yeah. Went down. Anyways, that was a. Uh, that was like. A little flashback I had when she was like freaked out about that when that was going on in the movie. That guy in the yeah, the terrifying about that the other day. I was telling my son about that the other day. I forgot why it came up, but I was telling him about that. Well, you live right near that theater. No, yeah, we we're, were probably walking by the theater, and and for some reason it popped in yeah, my head. Yeah, probably. I think it's the day we went to the Halloween store. We went to Spirit or something, and I was talking about it. I was talking about oh that guy. There was a guy we used to work with. Yeah. So then. Um, okay, the mall thing happens. That's a big right. deal. So it's on the news. Right. So she's, um, the, Sienna realizes that Art the Clown was there. She was there before, but left before the explosion. So she's like, okay, that was not a hallucination that I, I thought I saw him. He was there. Right. Cause she, she actually, like you said, had the Sarah Connor scene and, where and she saw him in between a, the crowd walking by looking at he's her. He's wearing, he's wearing a big fat chubby Santa, head. Santa Claus hat. Head. But she could tell that that was probably him. Yeah, because it's blood, and they have the dinner scene. So that triggers she's... her. That triggers her. Now everyone, the <laughs> her guardians are thinking, okay, now she's just, she's batshit she's crazy acting. Yeah, but she's saying no, he's here, he's here. That's kind of what staring, the... and she's scaring their daughter. Yes. So that's when the family rift starts to happen. Oh, we missed a big part. The daughter is super into her. She starts reading her private journal. Oh right, right, so right, right. She starts right. learning like the secrets. The the which, the by the way, story. that's a huge fucking journal. That shit looked like Lord of the Rings. It was like <laughs> fucking that. Dude. It was the ne- the Necronomicon. The Necronomicon, right? So the cousin is obsessed with her. Yeah, she's a, she loves her, looks up to her, is obsessed with her, and she's at one point she finds out that she has read her fucking whole entire journal, and she gets pissed. And she pulls her aside and she's it's like, the only time she's that? mean to her. That's the only time she snaps on her. Yeah, but she does it for a reason. She doesn't oh, want her to think that she's batshit crazy. And she doesn't want her to learn yeah. all this crazy shit that she went through, you know? But so maybe maybe it's kinda like, you know, like those the, the hard trope where if you if you talk about it, it'll happen. You know, it'll once you once you yeah, realize, yeah. you know what I mean, Art the Clown now knows that you know kind of deal. Right. So then, you know. That whole family dynamic and the dinner scene starts to kind of break apart a little bit. And now the whole there's a whole other like layer to the movie with like family drama going on. And uh, from there on out, she tries to reach out to her brother who's in college. And he's Art kind of tracks him. Huh? Art, Art, Art finds out where he lives, where, where the school is, and he goes to the dorm. Right. But before that happens. Oh. She reaches out to him. Oh. And yeah. she's trying to like meet up with him. She hasn't seen him in a while because she's been in the mental yeah. hospital and all that. 
And he kind of, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll meet up. And he kind of blows her off. And he's like, oh, I have like a frat party thing I have to go to. Yeah, and he's she's moving, like, oh, he shit. seems to be moving on and she's not. And she kind of gets trying. Jealous. He's faking it. He's trying to yeah. move on. But he's kind of like, I don't want to hear this. Don't tell me that Art's back. Stop. Right, right. And then she meets up with him at a uh, coffee shop or something. No, it's like a. Oh, it's, it was. I it was it's, like a cafeteria. It, it's the. It's the. The college, the college, the college campus cafeteria. The college lunch area. Yeah. Right, and then you oh, know she girl. she's kind of telling him, the "Fuck is wrong with you? You're the one that told me all this crazy connected shit about our dad and all this stuff, and now I'm telling you that it's actually you were fucking right, and you could tell that he's kind of like thinking about it now." And then the podcasting girlfriend of his roommate shows up and all that shit. And she's like, oh, my God, you know, you're, you're Sienna. And, and she's looking at her like, what the fuck is this? Who's, who the fuck are you? And she's like, you have to come on the podcast. And she starts to fucking grill her with these stupid questions. Yeah, and she fucking snaps on her. Yeah, she she snaps on her. She's like, you think it's fucking funny? You think all this shit? Which is great because, like I told you, he gives that like final girl uh layers you know she's really like a fucked up person you know and i think it was a great touch that they slightly casually show and i don't know if you noticed but they did it to her and her brother where they purposely have a lot of close-ups of them talking to each other so that you can lightly see the scars oh, yeah, the on their scars. faces yeah they both have them you know so it kind of reminds you of the baggage that they're carrying and after that whole scene it kind of sets up the premise of this fucking podcasting chick is going to get it good later she's annoying as fuck she's pissing off the protagonist so by the time art the clown gets a hold of her is gonna be good you know what i mean even her boyfriend was annoyed and the boyfriend, her and the boyfriend the roommate you know it's kind of like you fuck with the with the good guys, even though they're the good guys, the bad guy will make them pay for it. Yeah, the more the more jerky right. the people are, the more you want the more you want art to hurt them. Right. Leading up to the one, two of the biggest uh, attack scenes. Even <clears throat> one thing about this movie, they don't Sienna and Art the Clown barely are together this entire movie till the very end. Yeah, it's a lot they of back keep, cutting back and forth. They keep Probably like two whole separate fashions of the story intertwined, but totally split apart. It's like heat, man. It's like heat. It's like heat. That's right. So then after that whole scenario, they're building up to the fact that there is a party at the dorm room. Okay. Which ends up being the centerpiece kill of Terrifier 3. And the way they first set up Art the Clown getting to a frat party is so good. It's so fucking funny. And, and he it's just walks so, in, all the drunk people. He just walks in. They, they the just cut to a typical, you know, beta gamma party type of shit where all of the fucking bros are drunk, spilling out of the front and hanging out in the front of the house. And here comes a guy dressed like Santa Claus and Killer Clown with a giant bag bumping through people and they're all laughing at him. Oh shit, great fucking costume, whatever. And he's just like, Art the Clown. He's just like, yeah, thank you, bro. He's just walk, making his way through, you know? And it's like, it makes no sense. How the fuck does he know he's there? How the fuck do he knows where to find them in the bathrooms? Yeah. You just kind of have to remember that he's a demon and he probably senses who he's looking for and where he has to go. You just kind of have to like believe that. You know yeah. what I mean? I think there was a scene where he calls like the father. He calls the the father, the, the the uncle, and and tricks them into finding out where he's at. Remember? I think he Art the Clown finds out somehow where they're at through something, but it doesn't matter. He he shows up there at the dorm. Yeah, he shows up at the dorm, and then the podcast chick and the boyfriend are like getting freaky in the bathroom stalls upstairs. Well, first first Art he eavesdrops on them talking about him. Remember? Right. Well, he gets to the stalls, and when he goes into, which is funny. Well, I'll touch on that afterwards. He gets to the stall, he's hiding at the door, and they're talking about him. 
about this whole serial killer and all this shit. There's a funny back and forth where they're talking about Art the Clown in a way that's almost like making him bashful. He's like, oh, he's like loving it that they're talking about him in such high praises, right? And uh, then he just goes in his bag of tricks and pulls out the Scarface chainsaw. Yep. And pretty much reenacts Scarface in a very <laughs> fucked up way. Well, yeah, Scarface, if there was a scene with, with uh, anal probing with a chainsaw. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. That, that, obviously, we're going to talk about that, but there's one little spot that everyone in the theater went, ooh, this movie is very graphic, but but that one was the was just the sound where he basically starts chopping the girl first. The boyfriend tries to intervene, and he gets kind of like chopped in the leg. He stumbles out of the shower, and when he tries, when he puts weight on the leg, the leg just snaps in half. Snaps into yes, and it's hanging by a big chunk of flesh and bone. Yes, that's not the part that, That's not the part that got me because to me that's so out of. It's so like visceral. And I know that it's fake, that it doesn't hit me the same way. The part that out made me cringe was a part that would look like a real accident. He like he's he pushes the boyfriend or something and he swings the chainsaw back at her and he clips her in the forehead. Da knocks her back. And pretty much like just like fucking splits her right here. And that looked like a real horrific accident. Like a real like Shit like that has probably happened where somebody with a chainsaw has clipped somebody by accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's all, or she's all like, oh like, god, dude. hanging. Yeah. Oh god, I was like, oof. Then he attacks and, the boyfriend and basically slices him in half from the back, dude. and flips him over, and then the the ball shot. The, the genital the shot. Ass, I didn't expect that one. Full ass balls glory shot, and here comes the chainsaw, and they're not cutting away, and everybody in the theater was like, oh my god. They're not cutting away, they're not cutting away, now he flips them over, he keeps going. It was going, basically going. the reverse Terrifier 1 saw scene. Yeah, now it's a dude. Because you know what, I think he was getting a lot of flack. It's like, why do you only do that to women? Demean though, and it's sexual demeaning, yeah. So they're like, oh, don't worry about it, I got Those you. Dudes. I got you, I got you, my bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely probably why because the, the boyfriend was not really that much of a jerk he would have probably you know what i mean so they probably like okay well let's do it to the guy this time the guy gets the the brunt of it i'm gonna take my sweet ass time and like just go to town on this guy right now and then you were screaming it out loud bro you were calling it like please do it please do the blood angel yes a, after everything is said and done the bathroom is a giant like pool of blood equivalent to like the shining elevator scene and it gets quiet and art the clown just sits down in the pool and then he just casually lays on his back the camera just cuts to a wider scene and he just starts doing blood angels and you were like a pig and shit like i called it you're gonna I do it right you're gonna do it, it right because i'm like they set up the shot on the top and they keep showing him like oh he's gonna do it please do it because that's the first thing i thought <laughs> <laughs> that's something totally he would do you know like when he writes his name on the wall and puts his eye back in from the second one doesn't say much about you either that that's the first thing that you thought he's gonna do the blood angel i didn't even think about it i was like really i was like oh shit i think you're right oh shit he did it good for you every time i walk by downtown miami and i see a pool of blood on the floor that's the first thing i want to <laughs> do but i can't because i'm dressed in my jacket right before you go to the courthouse you're like eh, yeah, 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 yeah. hold myself <laughs> not going it's like it's like liar liar when he comes back from the bathroom <laughs> your honor <laughs> oh art the clown and, and yeah but too jo too much joker in a courtroom that would be good like where would you want art the clown at a theme park at, at a, on a roller coaster oh my god art the clown that's the thing about him you can put him in so many scenarios so many things you could do with that so many good clown. teasers you know like one of those like tech conferences any questions and then it goes Tung, and it's him <laughs> <laughs> at like the Apple seminar, se you know, seminar, and he's like this. TED talk. <laughs> a TED talk, yeah. Or he goes up on stage, you know, like to to like be like the the person that's gonna do something with the phone. He's just are smashing the Steve Jobs Junior with it or something. So many things. So, so then, as the movie goes forward, we're led to the final set piece, which is basically her aunt's house. Yeah. Where Art the Clown comes with 
the uh, deformed demon chick from part two. Um, Basically, yeah, has them all tied up, facing their fate, almost like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre thing. Yeah, it is kind of like that. And there's a scene earlier in the movie that we didn't touch up on, but it kind of set that tone, which is a really creepy fucking scene where he goes to that abandoned house and he sits on the chair and he's looking out that window. Oh, yeah. He goes into like hibernation mode for like five years or something, right? It's like they're, yeah, it's like they're, they were like powering down. Yeah. And the torn chick is in a bathtub just filled with, she stabs herself in like the vagina. Oh, I forgot about that scene. That was the most disturbing scene. Goring shit out. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? And she's just bleeding into a bathtub and she just lays in her own stuff. And well, then the, the vagina scene was before when she was getting aroused when he killed behind the guy. Him. Then she basically like kills herself. She cuts her. Oh, yeah, you're right. Out. She goes to the bathtub, slice, slices, slices her wrist and, like, and just lays out. in it. I understand and, Art the Clown was there with cobwebs, right? But she, she it, I guess, I guess obviously she's more like flesh and bone, but I guess she's a demon. At that point, we weren't sure because she was not bones. You know, she was still like flesh. But she it was like, away. it's led you to believe that it's been like no, it's five years. years. Five it's years. Five years later, yeah. Of them just staying there until like the people that come in that are like to like Dem- the- demolish the house. Demolish, they're they're like, going to demolish the, the house. The demo crew guys come in and they're the ones who like discover them. The but the top is covered in like cobwebs. And it's like he awakens. And obviously, they both kill the two people. Mm-hmm. And that's what sets them off going forward in this movie. I forgot about that. We didn't mention that earlier. but I forgot about that. It's early in the movie, yeah. That that's kind of shows... I was getting a little worried. I was a little worried there. I'm like, what are they, they going to go with this? That's when they kind of let you know that they're demons. They don't... They just kind of like hibernate until it's their time again. You know? And they regenerate. So now, cut to the final set piece of the movie the aunt's house they show up and they start to basically fucking the final fight well art 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 kills the the stepfather the uh, the uncle off camera and has his body there remember and he's taking his intestines and he's uh uh wrapping the tree like tinsel with the with his head on the top they have the mom there with the 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 great sadistic saw thing where they're gonna put a a tube (sighs) And that was rats. so gross. They shove a fucking tube down her mouth and they just like start pushing it down her like this. You could tell it's like dislocating her jaw. Yeah, they hammer it. They hammer it. They and hammer it's it ripping down. her cheeks. And then they start putting fucking live rats down the tube. With it's a like, torch oh to force God. them to go in her body. Oh, well, that's right. They're torching the back of the tube, making the rat run into the tube. Oh, God, it's so long. That scene reminded me of a of a of a of a the only good scene in, in it's Too Fast Too Furious. Do you remember the rat scene when they're torturing the guy? The bad no. guy takes takes uh this this snitch, he lifts up his shirt and they put a rat on his stomach and they put a a, a bucket, a metal bucket on top of it, and they heat the bucket to get the rat to start scratching into his stomach and they get him to talk. So it reminded me of, of that that whole thing with the two rats and a bucket of cream. Remember <laughs> from uh Did you really just bring too fast to furious. Too fast to furious. Up. <laughs> yeah. I did think of the rat scene because I've 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 heard about that. They used to do that in medieval times with the rats. So it's good that they're bringing back. I love rat torture for some reason when they bring rats into it. Family. Yeah. <laughs> I have that whole scene of Indiana Jones on loop. The rat scene. I just get excited. I just loop it, loop it, loop it. You're like the rat king. Yeah, me. I'm the rat king. <clears throat> oh wait, so, wait. We got a segue that they they try to they they bring in a a, a eaten head. And insinuate that that's that it's a, her brother. Yeah, Which I I don't believe they're not going to get a main character like, like that. Kill him off camera and not give him a glorious. That ain't going to be her brother. But anyways, she, they tie her down to a chair, and she has to witness this whole like torture. You know, at first they make her believe that the skull thing was her little cousin. Yes, the little girl. And they're just fucking with her. They're just fucking with her. She's taped up and she's screaming. She's trying to get out. They're killing and torturing the her aunt. They killed her aunt's husband. And she's just crying. She's so good in it. You could feel like she is fucking being tortured. They break uh, her hands. They break her hands. Oh, we missed a big part. She had gotten the, the knife, the sword back. Later. Uh, you're, uh, 
then they they like tell her basically that they're fucking with her and they bring out the little girl she's not dead yeah right but now they're like we're going to kill her or whatever and she's t- and she's like they take the tape off of her mouth or whatever and she's like please just let me give her a present and they're like they they indulge her which is kind of like a stupid MacGuffin, which is like why would they do that but they're like they so let her that maybe they anything. let her go get a present from the tree where the body is on the tree they let her bring a box back which is a wrap present which is where the the sword is right and the little girl knew saw her put the gift back there earlier yeah the little girl knew that the sword was there because she had read also her fucking her, her her diary so she knew what the sword was and uh so then for them to make fun of this they want her to unwrap the box but before they untape her the demon chick breaks her hands with a mallet Ah, she like breaks both of her fucking hands with a mallet it's brutal then they untape her hands and they throw the box at her and she keeps telling her unwrap it now and she's like trying to like unwrap it. It's a very painful looking scene. Oh, and it's all drawn out. It's almost like Passion of Christ oh, level. Oh, yeah, man. Breath. You see her mangled hand and she's trying to rip the thing. But then she pulls it out. And that's when the demon's like, oh, fuck. And she just like stabs her, right? Like, yeah. But right before that, she tried to possess her, remember? But she was too strong. Oh, dude. Let me tell you something. That possession scene that was creepy. Was the scariest scene in the whole fucking movie they do this cool technique i don't know what they do her yellow eye glow almost looks like old school rotoscope Scoping, yeah it, looks like it doesn't look like eye. tgi it just looks like an old school rotoscope and the way they fuck with the audio whenever she's trying yeah. to she's trying to possess her and it, the lighting starts to get dark and dim and the audio gets deformed almost like exorcism shit. Yeah, it's like exorcist, exorcist voice, but a little robot. But it's also in a it has way the actor's where... voice in it too. It also has the girl's voice in it mixed with Yeah, the, the audio mixing is fantastic. And they do like this it makes it feel still like grindhouse style. It's very like lo fi. Yeah, it sounds like Bane talking. Bane, you? like Bane, like what are you talking about? It's so lo fi and greeny. And it makes it gritty and real, and that's what makes it so fucking scary that it looks legit. Like when you go see a horror movie nowadays, it's all basically obvious CG. It looks like a fake CG enhancement. This, in a way, almost looks real, even though you know it's real. It's a co- that's what happens when Hello Studios when you use fucking prosthetics and physical shit for real. It gives it. A real viability. It gives it weight. It gives it. Yeah, put a, in the extra time. Put in the extra time in the pre-production and the production. It gives it such a creepy. Why do you think '80s movies still hold up with the effects, the good ones? Yeah. Because rotoscoping is a physical animated strip that they physically added to film, and it's there. CG always looks like a cleanse filter that they just threw on, like a layer, a cheap layer on top. And no matter how many layers they add to it to make it look like film grain or age it or blend it in, it looks like a fucking filter to make it look that way. Mm-hmm. When you do it for real, like a woman in legitimate prosthetics with a rotoscoped eye, which actually now I want to research it and see how the fuck they did it. And real good audio mixing to a level where instead of enhancing the the uh, the the Dolby surround or whatever it degrades it it makes it low file low fi and gritty with the lighting and you the know, wind that, and the wind there was wind blowing that the Christmas tree behind art they they cut to art and he's just like at that scene he kind of sits aside he, he like looked Darth like Vader. he was scared even he was like god damn no, he looked surprised cool. yeah it, it reminded me of <laughs> It sounds stupid. It reminded me of Return of the Jedi when Darth Vader's just standing. The Emperor, the Emperor is going out of the town at Luke. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a good comparison. Him. He's huffing and puffing like this. And then behind him, you see the Christmas trees shaking and the little girl screaming. Nah. Yeah, because at the end of the day, that demon is a lot higher up the chain than Art. He no, that's is. Pazuzu. That's Pazuzu. That's like the exorcist. 
she manipulates Art the Clown to do the shit she needs. That is the real fucking demon that's like controlling shit. And he's even like taken aback. He's like, Jesus, this is fucking beyond me even. You know what I mean? It, it was uh, almost like crazy. I was like, is he going to help her out? For that's why I remember the pale girl had the yellow glowing eyes. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She is she, the pale girl. Yeah, yeah. It, it transferred now. It, yeah, she grew up to that. Right. That scene, I remember, I was like, I, I whispered to Dina, I was like, bro, this is fucking legitimately scary. This is some, like, exorcism shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scary, well done. I was like, fuck, this scene was... And if you notice, she's trying her best to take over Sienna. She's fighting back, too. Sienna has she's like fighting this. back. And, and she's kind of, de- she's starting to turn a little bit like a her demon. Her face is weird. Yeah, it's they, dark they, they, and, like, the lighting is so good. And her teeth, like, in that scene, her teeth, they changed the color of her teeth in that scene when she goes back. It's and goes, weird. Yeah, man. They did a great job. And it's like, she is like the chosen one. Her, their whole goal is to take over Sienna's body. Once they do that, they could probably like wreck hell on the world. They can start their real plan of like breaking, like letting hell be unleashed and go on killing sprees and bringing more demons and shit. But she's too strong for them. And then she busts out with a sword and fucking impels the fucking demon, bitch. And then they do this cool shot where her fucking hands regenerate back. And you see, like, the 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 split scars. Like, they do it in a way where it doesn't look like CGI. It almost looks like stop yeah, motion. Was, I can't was, explain it. It's, yeah, yeah. Well, that was, after, I, that, was, that was after she tried to save the girl. Remember, she cut her hand in the sword. Oh, that's right. And she cut her hand holding the sword. Yeah, it was like two big chunks of meat, and then they slowly close. It, it looked like you could see the fibers regenerating. Could have done a prosthetic portion and then added in the computer to her hand. You know what I mean? Like mixed. Yeah. It. So she kills the main demon, or you think you kill, and she's like bleeding out all over the floor. Her blood turns like to acid, and it starts eating the floor. Eating the floor, and then she goes at it with art. Yeah, they have they have their own brawl and smashing across the house. While they're going Kill at Bill, it, Kill Bill style. While they're going at it, they keep cutting to the little girl watching all this shit, but she doesn't notice that that blood is like eating away at the floorboards and it's like like aliens. It's yeah. just eating through the floor. And what that blood does eventually, it opens a portal to hell. And it burns out and you see all this red light and shit flying out. And the little girl falls into the pit of hell. And, and Sienna tries to catch her. And she catches her with the back of her sword. She's holding on to the handle while Sienna's holding the blade. And is sliding down her hand and splitting it open. Yeah, it's like Lord of the Rings. Don't let go, Frodo. Pretty much exactly like that. And she's basically like, climb up. And she's like, I can't, I can't. This kind of reminds me also of... Uh, a monster room. squad oh monster squad the, the, when they're holding oh. the little girl from going in the portal in the sky the limbo, the limbo ball the limbo right but she actually falls in yeah right <clears throat> and then when she, when all that happens i don't remember does the portal close yes it falls in and then it closes it closes boom and when she falls back and oh, she looks up art the clown is gone mm-hmm. he like dipped he's like fuck this shit i'm out of here i don't even know what the hell's going on he disappears uh and then they have she's the all, she's all she's literally all alone she's all alone and, and that's what they're gonna blame team. they're gonna blame her i mean theoretically the police are gonna blame her for everything at that point she's probably gonna yeah you know. that's when they show the cool scene where she looks down and her hands regenerate and now you know that she's like full powered up badass fallen angel like warrior bitch now and she can control her powers more and she has her sword and then it cuts to like, it cuts to like a bus stop. Yeah, for the final scene. And and Art the Clown is like walks up to the he's sitting on the, on a bus stop and he's like pensative. He looks like okay. So I I saw in an interview another thing he said. I don't know if it was him or somebody else, and I wonder if it's true. He's now back to being regular human mm. or serial killer because his demon partner is gone now interesting I didn't and think that's about why that. that's why he fucking got out of there he lost his demon powers so they cut to him 
all fucked up and bloodied up and he's sitting in a bus stop with his bag and a bus shows up and he gets in the bus and he just sits down another like tarantino scene where the bus driver and that one passenger having a little banter about this book that they're reading it's called the nine gate the original oh, short the ninth film. gate yeah oh, the ninth oh. gate. not the johnny depp ninth gate right no it's it's an it's it's a nod to the short film oh okay his original short film. yeah i didn't realize it was called ninth gate which now i now have to look into it because i don't know if that short anthology movie or whatever the fuck it was no that was all Hall hollows eve i don't know if that short film had any mythology written into it and maybe that's why they showed it i have i don't know i have to look into that but and basically and then art the clown basically does a weird face honks the horn and you assume he's gonna slaughter them and, move and it just ends and it, it kind of ends in the cliffhanger yeah so nachi. part three ends in the cliffhanger i have a question for you nachi and there's no and, credit cookies or nothing it just oh fucking yeah, it just ends. Ending, cut to credits i have a question for you because you brought up some good things i didn't think about the human element before the human el now he's a human again i mean he's back to his other form because uh -huh. the first movie showed the makeup on right i think in the fourth one they're gonna kind of try to delve into who was art the clown when he was human or you think they're gonna keep it a mystery i don't know if i want to know i don't think i don't think they will because i believe damien leon only plans to do for himself but it's such a hot commodity fran it's a legitimate horror franchise now that i believe what's going to happen is we will go through our five-year hiatus and now he will allow other directors to take it forward from here He's so do like a final the like the next one should probably call it like terrifier the final chapter or something like that <laughs> yeah start fucking re rehashing past horror no, but i'm movies. saying it might it might it might i have a feeling the next one might actually be like not a, i mean i hope they do four but it might just go into now names you know what i'm talking about to kind of differentiate between because you know you get to a certain point when it gets hollywood that they're like oh the numbers we don't like numbers because people didn't see part three won't see part four you know that kind of bullshit Terra Four. yeah have you noticed <laughs> yeah Terra, ter do the yeah, Terra Four or something like that I I, so i he says he knows how it ends you know and i truly believe him why wouldn't he by part three you would think you'd have the that whole ending figured out you have a vision that's why you, you're leading it in a certain direction but i believe that that's how they will lead you to believe in part four he will be killed is because he's a human now so the budget's going to be now, double. The budget's going to be higher you know that oh yeah yeah i mean are we going to get 10 15 million maybe even 20 million dollars to do it as of now as of yesterday it's grossed 43.8 million that's a two domestic. million dollar budget two million dollar budget you think the studios are gonna let him just sleep on this franchise? No. And it's unrated. They released it unrated. They didn't compromise. Well, I mean, it's, the, it's it's the the highest grossing unrated movie in the history of movie. I mean, yeah. don't say much. There's not that many unrated. I know, but that's 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 not something that happens often that they release a movie unrated on the Dude, theaters. It made forty three point eight as of yesterday. What did the Joker cost? Two hundred million. Two hundred million. What did it make? Like. Six? No, opening weekend? Uh-huh. Opening weekend made 37, but that's bad because that's a major movie. Oh, 37, okay. And then, yeah, yeah but, but that was the first weekend, and then no, it dropped drastically. I don't, I don't think, I don't think it's even hit, I don't think it's even hit 100 million, dude. Which is, which is, no, it's the biggest, it's a huge failure financially. They lost so much money, because $200 million budget, you know it's more, plus marketing. There's a channel I follow, it's called, uh, whatever, this guy analyzes, like, the profit versus what. The Warner Brothers spent almost four hundred million dollars total with promotion and everything. Oh, I believe it. They're gonna I do it. They're gonna have a net loss of almost two two fifty to three hundred million. Good lord! Then you wonder why they're all going fucking bankrupt. And you know the deal they made with Joaquin, the director, all that money, half of it's gonna oh, go yeah. to them. Look, and Lady Gaga, you know how much money they must have gotten chunk out of that? She got paid ridiculous amount, uh, like twelve million dollars or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hold on, Joker. Wait, Joker box office. Box office mojo. Like, Dude, in the first movie, it made one point two billion dollars. It's so crazy. Because it was actually a good fucking movie. Yeah, man, that's with greed. They should have quit when they were ahead. They should have said, "Look, 
the first movie was a phenomenon and it beat all odds that a rated r movie about a it was movie. what it was meant to be it was supposed to be an art house style standalone side film nothing more but the stupid greedy studio made so much money they forced him to make a sequel that he didn't want to do and this is what happens it happens all the fucking time we don't talk about this shit the joker's been out for almost a month you know how much it's made domestic is what you know domestic us 57 million terrifier is gonna pass it uh two million dollar movie terrifier already terrifier as of yesterday was already almost at 47. internationally it's made more you know 130 total 192. that hasn't even made back its budget yet That's crazy. It's bad. That's crazy. I mean, when it comes out on video, you know, I I think you should watch it. It's definitely worth watching. Oh no, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna it's watch not, it. It's 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 not gonna be the same as part one, obviously. But I'm watching it's it worth though. watching it because it, it's 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 an interesting train wreck. You're gonna watch it, and you're gonna be like, in the beginning, you'd be like, I don't get it. Why don't people like this movie? And then it just it just is like, what's going it takes on? It's a U-turn. No, I'll, I'll watch it for but, free. But not in a good way. It's like a you. It's like it, the movie. At one point, you're like, it, it, it. You can tell this movie doesn't actually know what's doing. It's just, yeah. It's just bullshitting you. It's just bullshitting you until it ends. And you're like, what? <laughs> but it looks, it looks great. It looks good. It's well, yeah. Well. They got, they got the amazing cinematographers and a huge budget. So yeah, it better. Those, those courtroom scenes are. They look, dude. It's like remember, remember Ghostbusters too. It's like that level, that giant courtroom, like Ghostbusters too. But it, it's all, it looks so good. There's they have cameras filming. It's live, even though it's the '80s. They have televised cameras with the big, giant black and white monitors. They try yeah. to create the whole scene with Robert De Niro in the courtroom, where everyone they cut to people watching it in Gotham City, watching the trial on TV. Like it has so much things. You're like, oh my god, this is gonna be so good, and it just like what. This is not this, this, this they could have done so much more with the courtroom stuff mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but you know him in joker makeup acting as, as his own attorneys talking to the judge and the jury imagine that and they have great shots where the camera is like far away it's filming joaquin phoenix you know, walking back and forth talking you know to the to the court but the camera is behind starts moving behind the cameramen so the cameramen are in the foreground you know what I'm talking about out of yeah. focus so you can see joaquin phoenix and then what the tv is showing him and they match and they're going between it. So you see the TV version and Joaquin Phoenix at the same time as he's walking back and forth in the courtroom. It's filmed yeah. really well. It's just story-wise, story-wise, it feels like like they had nothing and they just had to do it to make to to make the money for everybody. Which yeah. didn't happen. I thought it was kind of fitting that <clears throat> actually into this video, I'm gonna intercut all the footage that we took from uh Yes. You Damian got my stuff. Leon. You I got did. my you got my stuff that what I think so my video yeah uh, uh yeah I got Dina's videos I got mine so I'm gonna show like in here like the crowd yeah. them addressing us uh all the actors and actresses coming in and talking to us I thought it was awesome but I thought it was kind of fitting that <clears throat> there's a part where they let the whole crowd into the theater and right before you walk into the theater you have to pass a massive lit up standee of the Joker it was like a banner or something yeah and it's like right before you get the terrifier and i'm like that's kind of fitting it's pretty funny and in fact david uh the director damien Lowe, mentioned joker in, in his oh, he, did. he goes you know you got the joker cost 200 million dollars and we got our movies little movie made two million dollars we already the number one movie in america in the number one movie in the in the world everyone started screaming yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah fuck yeah i'd be so proud if i was him too you know fuck yeah and he does it, he's like the jump and it shows it shows how the old fashioned way of, of releasing a movie. You get good word of mouth. You do a movie that people are interested in and Dude, he talk said about it. it. He said it to us. We spent zero in advertising. There's no marketing for this movie. It's and all they, social think, media and word of mouth. Yes. And legally they can't they can't do ads for a movie like that if it's unrated. Legally. That's why there's no TV spots. But I'm sure he could in other ways make ads to be placing it everywhere and make and for money. Yeah. And he doesn't. And he doesn't need it. And look what happens. I feel like that type of movie, um, the vibe it gets from it not being advertised, just word of mouth, is sort of like this low key. Have you heard about this fucking movie? Yeah, that's how it is. So fucked up. It's sort of like it takes me back to the 80s, the type of shit. Like when you go in the video store, have you seen that weird faces of death cover? 
Yeah, it's like that. That's like an, a forbidden thing. Like, yeah, I've like, heard of that. like, like the classics. Not Night of the Living Dead was like that. It was a movie you talked about. Texas Chainsaw Massacre was. Yes. Like, my dad saw Texas Chainsaw Massacre in the movie theater it's, it's, with with his old girlfriend. He told me the story before uh -huh. he met my mom. He went with his old girlfriend to watch text at a drive-in or something. He said it was an experience, but nobody knew who was getting into it. Everybody was just freaked out in the drive-in. Everyone was just like. Everyone huddled together and was watching it together. Everybody drove home looking over their shoulder that night. And my dad was a hippie, so you know, they were probably blazing. Oh, oh yeah, sure. That day, everybody was a fucking hippie. But, man, I, I had such a great night hanging out with you and Dina and being in a movie theater with a crowd like that. It's been a while, man. It made you feel like, oh, man, I missed this shit. I missed this shit. Like, we used to sometimes do it. We used to go to those... uh midnight uh, hour october specials they used to do. oh look i did the thumbs up it did it it's yeah a, it used to do be the, i believe it's night owl theater night owl theater now it used to be called something else in, in, in coral gables and i uh, think it was always night owl here yeah and we would go there and it was it was run at the time i think so still by gloria stefan's son naib naib well he doesn't do it in here anymore he has that drive-in theater in downtown yeah, yeah. the night owl that's what it's called night owl yeah i actually dm'd him the other day i'll try to see if uh because he was I DM'd him about the movie because he posted. You showed me he posted. So I sent him a message and he started DMing me. Yeah, we befriended him and, and we talked to him. He even, he even uh, one time, remember, he brought us up to the projection booth and showed us the, the projection. I tried to, uh, I tried to uh, shove in there uh, us doing a podcast from the driving. I haven't heard back yet, but I, I oh, put it out there. I you put it out there. So by any chance, Naib, if you're listening, we would love to do something out there, man. No, for sure. Yes. But uh, overall, that's why I've become such a big fan of the Terrifier franchise because of the unexpected way that you pushed me to see it. The way I related to it, it felt like our days in film school doing a horror movie. They had that kind of vibe to it and what it has become. And now watching it beat down bullshit, woke ass Hollywood ass. No, you know? I love it. I love it. And it's like, you know, I'm like such a fucking like I'm so like I'm like a little cheerleader for this guy right now, you know? Yeah, me too, because uh, it's such a like a degenerate type of movie in a good way. And I, I, it, we, can, it, we can relate to it because remember when we were in film school, our movies were kind of like the violent ones. The girl, yeah, we were class, the grindhouse of the film school. Yeah, right. Everyone else, were, you know, the pretentious artsy fartsy guys that were doing movies about a flower or someone in a coma <laughs> or, or, or medieval times with no budget. We were the ones doing, OK, let's. Let's do shoot out and zombies and let's all kinds zombies. of shit. Let's do, uh, you know, just people getting shot. Let's have a squirting blood. We were the violent ones. And some of the some of the professors did not like that we were representing our school in that way. And oh, I remember thinking, you know, it's just a movie. It's just a movie. It's just it's, a movie. First of all, it's art. It's what we want to express. Why do we have to fall into X, Y, and Z? And Hollywood... It's all about money. It's always going to be about money. That's why it's always scary when people you look up to get to a certain level, like a Raimi and all that. You know, eventually they become part of the system. Yeah, Jackson, they lose their edge. Peter Jackson, Sam They Reed. lose their edge, and you're like, okay, so I guess we'll just get stuck reliving their past works because anything they do now, it's like you can't even recognize them anymore. But for now, we have to champion the fuck out of Damien Leo, man. Dude, keep it up. Do your thing. You're blowing up. You're doing shit that a lot of people like us would love to be doing. And uh, the sky's the limit, man. Try to, I mean, make your money. Go get the bag. But try to keep your shit in that realm as much as you can. Because you have a massive cult following now that's only getting bigger, man. And can't wait for part four, bro. Yeah. Anybody out there that's into this type of shit, I... I don't need to tell you. It's word of mouth is all positive if okay. you're into this shit. It's everywhere. I went to uh my local bar the other day. I was wearing the Terrifier shirt. It was this weekend. I think it was the next day. And the bartender goes, Oh, Terrifier, how was it? And we were talking about it. Everyone I, I, talks about it. And my I, who was it today? Somebody was talking about it. Uh it was somebody at my job. And they're like, Oh, I haven't seen. Oh no, no, talking shit. Went to the, I was at the barber shop. Yes, I go to the barber shop. Fuck you. <laughs> It's more beard work than anything. Uh, and one of our barbers, Jose, he's like a huge horror punk rock guy like I am. And he always asks me, have you seen Long Legs yet? And I haven't. 
And he's like, oh, you got to watch it. He's like, I still haven't seen Terrifier. I go, bro, I just saw Terrifier. He's like, oh, shit. And I go, and the director and the cast and crew were there. He's like, get the fuck out of here. And I was showing him clips on my phone or whatever. He was blown away. And I'm like, he's going to check out our channel now and shit. So he'll probably hear us on the podcast. So shout out to you, Jose. Uh, yeah, man, it's, it's like how it goes. It's all word of mouth. Everybody in that type of community, they're all going to see it. We went there. Everybody in that theater besides us, I think I've seen it like three times already. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's, right. let's keep going. We had this conversation for Terrifier 2 and we were not disappointed. So hopefully I'm pretty confident that the director and the cast and the crew are not going to disappoint us for part four. They won't. I, I totally believe that they will. And whatever, and whatever else they do afterwards, you know? Yeah. You know? So we'll wrap it up now for Terrifier 3. It was fantastic. A long we one. We are gushing about it, and we loved it, and we're all about part four. Um, talking about Grindhouse movies and how people do things correctly and how other things are have an idea that is very cool in theory, but yeah. then they go the A24 artsy way. Most of okay. it. There's a movie that I heard so much shit about. You gotta watch it. Oh, uh, well, I saw it Sunday, uh, Saturday, before we went to the movie theater. Um, I saw a A24 film called In a Violent Nature. Have you heard about this? All right, so In a Violent Nature is basically a Jason clone type of movie but it's all third uh it's it's all over the shoulder almost point of view through his perspective oh i heard about a movie that it, was the all movie over is the almost shoulder. the entire almost the entire movie is third person yeah, yeah okay follow okay. Me from behind it is the most fucking boring ass fucking movie i have seen in a while and i know a lot of people love it the idea was good. The kills are good. Very gory too. Super gory movie. But it's sprinkled sparingly throughout. David, there's no soundtrack, no score. It's just quiet forest ambiance the whole time. 89% of this movie is him walking through trees. Like elephant. But they cheat it. They cheat it because they do a lot of jump cuts mm -hmm. where he's walking through the trees by the daytime and then it cuts and it's dusk. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They can't and then the you'll thing. see like he's walking and in the distance through the trees, you'll see like a car go by a road with girls screaming. <laughs> and the camera moves with his point of view and he just starts walking towards wherever that car is going. Then it'll cut to like a cabin and the teenagers are there now and they're making a bonfire. And eventually it cuts back to him getting to the cabin, looking at them, you know, and you're just like, oh, my God. Oh, that's what you were referring to when I said I hate the waiting part in all these movies. Oh, my God. It's all waiting, bro. It's all waiting. First of all, you don't give a fuck about any of the teenagers. They try to give you a lot of them, a lot of them. It jumps to a point where it gives you a lot of camera time with them. The boyfriend and the, the. say, like, but just get to the fucking kills already. I get it. It's his perspective. That's the twist to this movie. That's the their you shit. You saw Thanksgiving yet? I have no, no, no. I'm I'm gonna watch Thanksgiving in the watch it for Halloween. It, it's a good. It's a good grindhouse. Is not, nothing at the level of. No, I don't, I don't have time for up, Halloween. But... It's it's one of my November reviews. I'm okay. gonna watch it for Thanksgiving. But uh, in a violent nature, look it up. It's on Shutter. Okay, I have Shutter. Watch it for a little bit. See if you kind of get the vibe. The idea is good. Now, the kills are very good. There's one in particular that has to do with a... Well, there's two. There's one that has to do with one of the last girls from the camp. The way she gets it. I've never seen anybody get killed that way. That was creative as fuck. I was like... Is it, is it worth... I mean, you think I'll be ruined if you tell me? Just give me a, a like. What does it involve? What what, what the kill? Is it like a stabbing? Is it a, a slight? She cornered on a cliff. 
And she kind of is just like, fuck it. I give up. And she lets him walk up behind him. And he stabs her through the fucking spine. And it comes out of the front. He carries two hooks with chains. So he fucking shoves the hook in there. <laughs> it comes out of the front. He hooks it to her fucking head. And then pulls the chain through her stomach. And rips her head practically out of her ass. Oh, I get it. He wow. turns her into a pretzel, a human pretzel. And it's quiet. So you hear all the bone cracking and shit, you know? But the one that's really the most fucking disturbing uh, is there's a part where there's a, there's a park ranger who has a history with the killer from the past. So he's like rounding up people. He's like, I know. It's kind of like Halloween uh, kills. Oh, okay, yeah. Where they're, they're like getting the mob like ready you know he, he has will a die tonight yeah oh god bro he's getting everybody like you have to go get him i know this guy blah, 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 blah. the way he gets fucked up do you want to watch it you want me to tell you to kill no you in i want to watch it now you interested me i want to watch it i'll watch it i'll watch it so then watch it it's a very quiet movie bro i mean i was already a violent nature in violent nature what is it in a violent nature in a violent nature the cover he he gets like this creepy looking like miners looking mask that has two giant goggles on it okay. that's his that's the cover basically you're looking it up yeah i'll look it up after we're done since we're done it's already this is gonna be a long <laughs> one by the way oh yeah i know what we're at i think an hour and a half or something hey bro it's a halloween special so Maybe. anyway more, even longer. I got two hours here in 39 minutes, but a lot of it was me waiting. So Hey, it's the Halloween special, man. We got to give it all we got. So anyways, I wanted to give a quick shout out to a local Miami artist who I didn't meet, but I met his partner. And he told me he's a huge Halloween horror nut and to reach out to him about our podcast. And I will. His company is splitplug.com. There we go. And he's a very fucking talented artist. I got one of his pieces to round out the uh, Art the Clown weekend I had. So shout out to him. And I uh, want to wish everybody a happy motherfucking Halloween. Happy Halloween. With our episode 11. We'll probably see you in November. We'll do it a lot quicker. Maybe we'll do some <clears throat> Thanksgiving related part. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, I mean, I'm not going to go on this hiatus. I have a lot of stuff in the works anyways. I have another haunted episode coming out. Uh, I'm leaving in two days. I'm going to go do a quick uh, Halloween Salem video in Boston. And I'm going to Mexico City to do a actual Day of the Dead, which I will try my best to release at least one of those in October with this podcast as well. So I have a lot of stuff coming up. Creature of the Night will be busy throughout the holidays. So... Like always, join our channel. If you're just watching for the first time, go to creaturesofthenight.com. You can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, X, you name it. But please follow us on YouTube. Give it a thumbs up and please leave comments. We always, uh, I always get a kick out of getting comments from you guys, whether it's nonsense or, or a true, you know, uh, hey, good job, or hey, this video sucked. I, I appreciate any feedback so thanks again happy halloween to everybody david happy halloween to happy you halloween have a safe halloween have a safe trip thank you sir will do i might do some uh might do some youtube shorts live from mexico city a day of the day we'll see about that so till next time episode 12 creep it real people happy halloween happy halloween